Hey there, I'm Scott, and this is Tangents. Well, I guess yesterday, uh, today is the 11th of December, 2020, um, someone was executed, Brandon Bernard, and I, I have some thoughts on that. Um, first off, execution is kind of a very sterile euphemism. Uh, I think a more accurate definition, a uh, more accurate term, would be to say that he was premeditatedly murdered by the state, um, which I think probably gives away, if you had any question how I feel about this, um, probably gives away where I'm coming from. Uh, this is one of these things, like, I, I don't want to talk about the details of the case. I, uh, I do know enough to know, you know, he wasn't even convicted of actually committing this murder. Um, but I don't think that that's even material because to me, under no circumstance is premeditated murder by the state acceptable. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, you know, you look at extreme cases like Osama bin Laden, um, on one hand, like I felt, I, I, I certainly admit I felt good when, uh, Obama put a hit on him and whacked the dude. But at the same time, it's one of these things where you're like, I'm not sure this is a great thing. And this is also like the extreme of, you know, fucking crazy extreme is murdering Osama bin Laden. Um, you know, if you're okay with that, which I have at least mixed feelings about, doesn't imply that you're okay with anything that's even slightly less than that. Um, and this is way less than that. So just in general, um, yeah, I mean, I have, I have a lot of problems with the way that we, you know, just, just much more broadly than murdering people, um, the way that police operate, you, if you watch this, if you listen to this, you probably know where I stand there. Um, but the police are able to basically murder people without consequences. Um, shockingly, shockingly easily, in fact. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's to the point where if they face any consequences at all, uh, it's, it's a miracle. You just, like, don't expect it. You expect that, eh, well, too bad. It's not going to happen. It's just it. So that's a, that's a thing. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have really a clear idea of... Um, I don't know where to draw the line or where to even start this conversation, but I would say certainly, you know, if you look at the way that we address crime, the way that we, you know, deal with it, mostly I would say it's pathological and it's primitive and sort of, you know, not something I, I, I kind of look at where I think, the world should be and maybe where hopefully it eventually will be and then i compare where we are to that so for example if you look at things like um you know not being let's 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 talk about bathrooms uh, people get their panties in a bunch about uh trans women using the women's restroom um, in the future i don't think people will get their panties in a bunch about it. I think that's just like a thing. In fact, I suspect potentially maybe you just have unisex bathrooms everywhere and then you kind of remove any problem at all. Um, yeah, it's kind of silly to me that they don't have that as a matter of fact, but it's one of these things where you can kind of see where the road leads, right? And then once you know that, um, if you kind of roll back and you're like, well, we're here now, you know, we're getting here. Why not just do it sooner rather than kind of dragging things on and looking like an asshole for a longer period of time, in addition to also making other people's lives needlessly more painful and miserable. So you can kind of see that. Um, I do think most of how we address, you know, and especially like victimless crimes, when, when you think about like in the extreme case, somebody actually murders somebody, they're convicted of it, um, that is... A very big problem like what do you do um, 
I'm, I'm not a person who believes that uh, murder is ever, ever justified. And by that, I mean, you know, it's not justified for the person who did it. And it's also not justified to kill them in retribution. I don't like this retributive justice thing at all. I don't think it is justice. Maybe it makes you feel good, but it's not, it doesn't bring the person back. It doesn't really accomplish anything. Uh, it's been shown not to act as any sort of a deterrent. So essentially all it does is makes people's bloodlust kind of, you know, get satisfied, which to me is sick and wrong. And, and I think like one of the things that's really noteworthy here is that Bill Barr is, has pushed for this and several other ex executions, murders, uh, to take place in the remainder of his tenure. Uh, this is a man who probably is going to leave public life, probably won't ever be... I, I think you could reasonably guess um, this is his last act. And his legacy, which he... I mean, he's been very clear he doesn't give a fuck what people think about him looking backwards. Uh, but his legacy is basically to you know, try to undermine uh, democracy, uh, be a sort of errand boy for Trump, and to make us, you know, murder people. And I, when I say make us, I mean, if the federal government is doing it, then we all have some measure of blood on our hands. Uh, it's, a, it's a big problem, actually. It's, a, it's an ethical and moral dilemma, really, when you think about, like, war. Um, war, at least, like, you're killing people, um, but when you look at it, like, okay, is it a just war? And it, it, it gets very... You can, you can go forever kind of debating whether or not war is justified. Um, you get to the extreme there also, and you're like, okay, we're, we're the Allies fighting against Nazi Germany in World War II. It's pretty easy to make a compelling case that that's a, as just of a war as you can have. Although at the same time, like some of the stuff that we did was firebombing civilian areas of cities, uh, which it's not like using nuclear weapons exactly, but uh, in terms of the damage and destruction and suffering, uh, it's not that different. You know, if, you're, if your roads are on fire and anyone there is getting burned to death, um, slowly suffering or, you know, worse, and they're civilians who just happen to be kind of there, pretty fucking, pretty fucking despicable. Um, but at the same time, you can kind of say, well, okay, you look at the camps and maybe, you know, I'm not saying it makes the other one okay, but you kind of like, okay, we got to liberate these things. And there's a cost to that. And part of the cost is, you know, maybe lowering yourself and doing things that under ordinary circumstances, you might consider very immoral. Um, yeah, it's, it's problematic. And there, there's a thing actually where Gandhi was asked if uh, nonviolence could be used against someone like Hitler. And, and, and what he said was basically, yeah, there would be great losses. Um, it, would be, it would not be easy, but his conclusion was yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely certain that that's true. Um, when you think about it, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big ask to not fight back and not to, you know, and in this kind of case, I mean, you have a bit of a paradox of tolerance that if you allow totalitarian regimes uh, who have a shit ton of power, um, resources, all of this kind of stuff at their disposal, if you allow them to sort of operate as they like and your only resistance is nonviolent, um, yeah, at a certain point, if they're controlling the information, your nonviolence is not even going to be useful in the sense that, you know, part of, part of how nonviolence works is that people see that people are just getting mowed down and they're not resisting. And then you kind of go like, well, this is obviously not right. And you kind of hope that, well, the people who are doing the bad shit will sort of lay down their arms and then go like, yeah, we're not going to do this. And I mean, it does kind of work. Certainly you can't argue with success in India and, el and elsewhere, but it's also complicated, right? So 
there you're kind of getting to the extreme where you're like, okay, is it justified? Is it not? Um, is there another way? Is this, you know, would the other way mean that you're losing so many people? It's very hard to say. But then you get down to the point where you're talking about murdering people who, again, were not even convicted of actually committing murder, but they were convicted of being there or being accomplices or something of, of this nature. I don't think there's any way that you can justify that. I don't think, um, you know, if you're trying to talk about using it as a form of, uh, you know, like people are going to see that and they're just going to go like, well, okay, I'm not going to do anything bad because that could happen to me. It doesn't really work. Uh, is, is it a deterrent? I mean, like I said before, it's been shown not to work. But also the problem with this kind of deterrence is that once you go past the gate, once you open that door, uh, if the only consequence to murdering somebody is that you're going to get killed, you can't kill somebody 10 times. Um, so after they've passed that threshold, even if it was an effective deterrent, how is it going to deter them from doing more? And you could say, okay, we're going to cause, we're going to cause them to suffer. Then you start talking about torture. Um, I don't even want to get into that, but again, torture, fucking evil, not justifiable. Uh, it's one of the things, like I, th there's a show called 24. I'm sure you've seen it, if not heard of it. Um, and I, I watched a couple of the first seasons of it and I kind of enjoyed it. But one thing I always hated about it is that it frames torture a in a way that's both necessary and effective. Um, and it's been shown again Torture does not actually yield usable information. Uh, it's mainly the only benefit of the torture is to dehumanize the torturer and make people feel good who are just sick uh, psychopaths who like to watch other people suffer. It doesn't give you actionable information, doesn't give you good information. Um, in fact, when you look at the information that people got just to go back to Osama bin Laden, uh, the information that people got there that was actually useful, for the most part, came from treating people with kindness and, you know, like human beings and then kind of getting them to open up. That led to, well, again, a murder, so maybe not the greatest thing, but it led to that information. The actual act of torturing people, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's so barbaric and it's so just utterly indefensible. Like I can't, I can't accept that this is something that people uh, consider to be reasonable or acceptable in any way. I just, you know, I look at it and it's just like, how can you, how can you live with yourself? And, and the, I know people who consider themselves to be religious, um, air quotes, giant, giant fucking air quotes, pro-life people who are very much pro-torture. Um, and I just, I don't know, I, uh, I, I don't even know what to say. I, I can't, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. You know, if, if this is something that you find okay, um, I worry about you. I worry, like, what kind of a horrible person are you if you're okay with torturing people? And I've also, I mean, even worse than this, some of those people I've talked to and, you know, give them kind of this... Uh, little bit of a Gedanken experiment, but uh, what if you could simulate the effect of torture? Like you feel the pain, but you're not actually burning to death. Um, and they were okay with that. They're like, well, if they're not actually going to die, then it's, you know, and you think about the consequences of that. Um, imagine you could suffer, but it's not going to kill you. Um, you could have arbitrarily large suffering for an arbitrarily large, long period of time. Uh, that's fucked. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that is horrible. Uh, at least, as bad as torture is, at least at a certain point, there's some hope that the torture will go on to such an extent that you'll have your suffering relieved. And here, you've removed that. Um, I, I don't know what to say to somebody who considers that in any way ethical or moral or decent or right or acceptable or tolerable. Um, it's just, it's fucked. It's fucked. And then you get, you talk to these people also, 
It's interesting how things cluster together. The people who are okay with premeditated murder by the state, um, often also perfectly fine with war, which is probably more like premeditated manslaughter by the state. It's not, you know, if you're in, well, it's an interesting thing. It's more like a degree of murder, like murdering somebody in the first degree with premeditation. Um, you've planned it, you know who you're going to kill, you have a fucking schedule for it, you have witnesses planned, all this stuff. That is execution, right? Murder in the first degree, no remorse, you're totally cool with it. Pretty fucked. War is probably getting more to like second and third degree. Now, if you're a sniper and you see that person, you're thinking about it, and you, you know, it's probably getting a little bit further down the scale. And then when it's an assassination, certainly you get back to the first degree thing. Um, yeah, it's, it, it gets complicated, but I think you're definitely in the bad space there. You're not really in a justifiable place. And it, it, it bothers the hell out of me, again, that people are okay with this. I think, again, like looking forward, you know, I, I would like to think there is a time in the future where people would not consider this even remotely acceptable. And you look like, okay, it's not acceptable. And you sort of roll back to where we are. You're going to keep doing it. You know, eventually the future is coming. You can try whatever you want. It's very hard to stop the future. And because it's hard to stop the future, it means that you're probably not going to, which means that you're probably going to end up catching up to the future eventually. And either you look like a complete horrible person or people remember you badly or that's your legacy or whatnot. Um, why not, why not get there sooner? Um, I just, uh, another one, I mean, not even, this is more statistical mass murder, but when you think about uh, the environment, our environment, um, putting endless amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere and putting us on a course for a tremendous amount of suffering and death, which is going to predictably lead to wars and famines, uh, you know, like in, in the best case scenarios, it's going to lead to very bad things. And in the worst case scenarios, it could be like civilization ending. Um, you know, I, going on that track, you have to kind of think, okay, well, that's where you're heading right now. At that point, people will probably not find it acceptable to just pollute endlessly and do the stuff that we're doing. So work backwards and you sort of think, well, now you're the you in the past um, and you see where you're going. Maybe don't do it. Maybe don't. Maybe get, you know, avoid that. Do something better. Be better. How that's not a thing, I don't know. How it's not obvious, I don't know. So I think about that. I think also, and uh, I don't mean to dehumanize people when I, uh, when I bring this up, but I think about veganism. And just, just to be clear, I eat meat. Um, I lean, um, yeah, I try to lean a little bit relatively vegetarian, uh, but I definitely don't succeed. Um, yeah, I fail at that. And I feel like, at least in terms of my own judgment, by far the most unethical and immoral thing that I do, and I do it regularly, is eat meat. Uh, I imagine at some point in the future, and, and to be fair to people now, like myself, at this point in the future, you'll probably not really have to experience like what it's like to uh, actually make some kind of compromise, because if you want any kind of meat product, uh, you can probably have it without murder. Whereas today, you know, I, I mean, meat is murder, it's, it's not just propaganda, it's a true statement. I don't think you can get far from that. So you get back to this clustering, you have the people who are air quotes pro-life, so pro-forced birth. Um, don't take care, you know, the state cannot take care of kids after they're born, can't help the mothers with um, basic health care, nutrition, all of the things that are necessary for, you know, like fostering that life that they claim to care so much about. Um, almost all meat eaters, uh, and almost all pro-war and arguably in many cases, hunters and yeah, 
so on. It's, it's like a cluster of bullshit there. So I look at that and I just, um, I'm tired. I, I, I really, I just can't listen to you anymore. That's all I'm saying. I, I see these people, I interact with them so, sometimes even, and I just, at one point in time, I used to kind of fall for your bullshit. I used to kind of think, okay, you have some morals or ethics that I just don't agree with, but you have them. Uh, but not anymore. I don't think you can claim to be pro-life and pro-death penalty. And even if you're pro-death penalty and you justify that with, uh, and I don't, I, don't, I don't even like using the word pro-life. You, you can't claim to be pro-life with giant air quotes when you're pro-first birth and you're for the death penalty. And then even if you try to tease that apart by saying, well, in the, in the case of the death penalty, they're guilty. They're, you know, whereas the unborn fetus is innocent. Um, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of bullshit there. But that same person is totally okay with refugees suffering and dying very often. Um, not universally. You do find some people who are consistent here. But they are the rare, rare, rare exception. The person who claims to be pro-life, pro-murder by the state, premeditated first-degree murder by the state, pro-war, pro-gun, which means pro-self-defense, you know, self -defense, or pro-murder in various degrees by people. Uh, all of these things kind of come together. And they're also very often meat eaters. Uh, so they're pro-murder of innocent animals. And I'm sorry, like, you know, humans are animals. Um, you can't get much more innocent than a baby cow or, you know, any kind of animal that you happen to be eating. Uh, unless that animal was a giant asshole, probably, probably pretty fucking innocent. And you're eating them. You're eating murder. So... I'm, I'm, I can't square that circle. I don't even want to anymore. I'm just done. I'm tired of the bullshit. And I'm tired of this whole idea that this is something that uh, has any kind of logical self-consistency to it. Um, and, and it's annoying as hell. Like, I, I would honestly rather the people who are like this just say, oh, you know, stomp their feet and go, well, this is how I feel. And it's, just, it's not based on anything. But, you know, blah, 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 it's a bunch of bullshit. Do that. I'd have more respect for you than if you pretend to be logically self-consistent and rational. Um, the, you know, the idea that you have this thing, I'm pro-life, even though I'm pro-murder by the state, even though I'm pro-murder of innocent animals. And you kind of like, because each time you have to, every time you do that, you have to carve it out. Start out, I'm pro-life. Okay. I've been, by the way, I, don't, I hesitate to even say that, but you know, you're starting there. I don't want anyone to cut that out and say, you know, I, but that's where they're starting from. They say they're pro-life. Okay. Well, what about murder by the state? Well, they're not innocent. They're guilty. So, you know, get the, get the knife out and kind of carve that part out. Okay. So they're pro-life that's innocent. Um, but what about, what about meat? Yeah. And even if you don't get to meat, what about refugees? What about people in other countries during war. Well, and then you slice and slice, take a couple slices and then they're innocent. Well, what about other animals getting murdered to, to eat them? Well, they're not. And, and then they always come up with some bullshit. Like other animals are not the, you know, they, they don't have a soul or some other bullshit. If, if you're going to argue, I mean, in terms of logical self-consistency, if you're going to argue that a fetus or a blastomere you know, these are people who say, like, life begins at conception. Even though, like, half of all pregnancies end in spontaneous abortions. Many of them before you even know you're pregnant. Um, but, yeah. So, if you had, if God was a thing and not just an imaginary character, um, you know, God's out there aborting, you know, the bulk of pregnancies. Or at least, like, half of them. But never mind that now. Yeah. Let's just say those were, you know, whatever. They never... We're going to come or whatever, whatever kind of bullshit you want to say to justify that to yourself. Okay. Now life begins, they claim, at conception. And so now when you have a blastomer, if you kill that, then you're committing a murder. If you're going to call a ball of cells or a fetus alive in the same sense that an autonomous 
self-aware human being is. Um, I got to tell you, I don't know how you can square that circle. I don't know how you can claim that and then claim that Bambi or a cow is not alive. You know, they, they do it, obviously. But, you know, I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well just say, well, all humans are autonomous. If you're going to say the cow is just an automaton that simulates the experiences that you and I have, how can you make that argument and not make the same argument for every other person? How could you make this, the distinction? Uh, which basically takes it to, like, for that person, it's not a very long step, honestly, to go from, well... These other animals are not alive. They're not humans. Um, to, well, these other humans are not alive. They're just, you know, like simulations. And then you kind of justify a lot based on that. So it's basically what I'm trying to say here. And hopefully I'm not rambling too much about this. But the very idea is ethically and morally bankrupt. Uh, there's no logical, self-consistent foundation for this. There's no, in, in an axiomatic sense, the only way you can kind of get there is to come up with your axioms to, you know, knowing the conclusion you want to arrive at. So you kind of work backwards from that. And that's not logic. That's not uh, some kind of rational reasoned argument. That's just working backwards from the conclusions that you want to arrive at to the assumptions that you're going to make, knowing that those will lead to those conclusions. And even then, you're not thinking it through that well because it's very easy, whatever assumptions you make, to come up with something else absurd that now you're going to have to throw in other assumptions because it's not logically self-consistent. So, I, I don't know, I hate, that the, I, hate it, I hate that it's dressed up in logic. I hate that it's dressed up in morals and ethics and principles. Uh, it's none of these things. It's just completely arbitrary. It's just how people feel. It's just quackery. Yeah. So with that, um, I don't think I want to go on too much longer, uh, but that's kind of how I feel. I, I don't like murder. I call me, I'm going to, I'm going to go like way out on a limb and say, I don't think murder is a good thing. Um, whether it's the state doing it, especially premeditated murder. Um, I don't think it's good. I think murder is bad. You know, call me crazy. Murder, not good. Uh, yeah. Now, to me, that seems a hell of a lot more pro-life than, you know, being anti-abortion. And I also am very pro-choice. And, you know, so how do you, how, do you, how do you come up with something that makes that acceptable, Scott? I feel like it's a little bit more, and I'm not, I'm not just to say this, I'm not trying to come up with an axiomatic system in which you get to murder bad, but abortion is okay. Um, I'm just sort of saying, you know, and I, I do think that such a system exists. Incidentally, I just don't want to argue from that perspective. I do want to say, like, to me, not the same fucking thing. You know, an unborn child, and especially one that is not fully developed and can't live autonomously, all of this stuff, um, not really the same thing as a born person, you know. So I can, I, I don't find any real moral ambiguity there, but it's kind of how I feel. Um, and again, I do, I do think that there is a logical argument there, but I don't want to, to make that claim. And I, I, I'm okay with that. I, I wish that the person who wants to claim that those things are, you know, I, I, I certainly would say this. If you look at sort of the, um, the diagram of where I'm cutting things off, um, you know, these things you could argue are murder. And I'm saying, okay, well, unborn child, probably at the very least, you know, is it murder? Eh, probably not. Um, and especially when you start looking at the circumstance under which, you know, like if there's a, people like to focus on abortions in the third trimester, like these late abortions. When those things happen, it's almost always because there's a serious medical problem that's going to end up killing both the mom and the baby. And this is like a last ditch effort. It's very rare, you know, when you look at percentages, it's a tiny, tiny fraction of these things. And when you look at what really constitutes the bulk, 
these are things much earlier on, um, far before the point where, you know, the baby is at all developed. And, you know, I mean, it's just like not the same thing. Versus you start coming up with this carve out where you've got like, okay, here's this stuff that's alive. And I'm gonna, like, they're gonna say the unborn baby is okay. But then there's a bunch of stuff in this other area. And I'm saying there's kind of like a continuum here. Um, you know, this is more ambiguous. And you kind of like get into, you know, and they start carving shit out over here where, as far as I'm concerned, much harder to do. You have to do, like, you're, it's, it's much more arbitrary, their cutoff, um, at least in my thought. But anyway, I don't want to, um, like I said, don't want to argue the point. Mainly here, my purpose is not to defend my position so much as to just say, I have no tolerance for this other position, especially if it's not logically consistent. Um, yeah. And especially if you're going to try to hammer that position home and push things like, uh, you know, like taking over the Supreme Court to specifically make abortion, you know, illegal, you know, getting basically just Christo-fascist activists in those judge or justice positions so that they can do this, so that they can overturn Roe. If that's your whole purpose, and then those very people could, with the stroke of a pen and zero effort on their part, save a life from premeditated murder by the state, don't fucking come at me and tell me that you're pro-life. That's all I'm saying. So with that, thank you very much. Um, and as always, Zai Jin.